In this episode, we finally get the Dodge truck back on the road. Let's do this! Woo! Alright, it's a new day down here. I really haven't accomplished much, but I did get a couple things done other than not fixing my fender yet. Uh, one of the main things is I got the seat belts finally mounted. Or the seats, not seat belts. I don't have any seat belts yet. We should really fix this front clip. But, so seats are in, right? They are welded. You can see I did some spot welds on things around. I also got my drive shaft in. But unfortunately, it's too short. I'm sorry, it's too long. So I have to bring it somebody to shorten it. And I also got the steering wheel on. So steering wheel on and connected up front. Little minor things, little minor victories. But uh, for the seatbelts, what I end up doing is taking quarter inch plate steel. Uh, this is a small cut of one of them. Uh, I used a six by six on the rear section and a two by six in the front to do a couple tack welds on it so it has to bolt through that so it can't pull it through as easy. So hopefully it works pretty well because safety does matter sometimes. Sometimes. Um, all right. But I got a lot of goodies that just came in the mail. So I figured, why not try to unbox them for you guys? We'll see how they all look. And I'll test fit what I can. We'll go from there. Let's try it out. All right. Well, three boxes. Got some other random small stuff. I'm not gonna count those yet, but three boxes. Let's see what I got. The kit I need for a rear disc brake setup on my eight three quarter. So it's a little hard to see, but I ended up cutting back on the area where bolts are gonna access. I used a little smaller hole saw down there. So the bolts bolt into a piece of one inch angle iron, which I have welded down on the sides to kind of bring this mounting back one inch. I ran out of lumen in the back, and I don't want to try to run everything and then re it and it be short or whatever it be. I'm just gonna leave the back as is. Still gotta wire up the tail lights. Still gotta do the fuel sending unit. I think that's all I got. And the turn signals. Well, I mean, those are the tail lights, but yeah. So I think five wires. That's what I got in the back. How you deal with that? What I am gonna switch to now is the auto meter gauges. So let's get all these things out, kind of spread out, kind of see what comes with all, and uh, hopefully I don't need uh, additional like temp sensors and stuff. I'm hoping y'all came with it. I'm not gonna be optimistic though. I'm assuming those are purchase extra. So let's see.
just sit in a Meyer cleaner for a minute. All right, so originally I was gonna run a stack, a stock battery tray inside of the 440, by the 440, I should say. However, um, I'm not going to. I'm gonna end up going to most likely an Optima yellow top, and in turn, uh, I need a battery box to be able to secure this down if I'm gonna use it for autocross. So I went with GSI's box, I guess, but the issue is, I got two of them, one for the compressor and one for up front. Well, I didn't really know how I was gonna mount this, and I thought, I would run the stock tray and then put the GSI box right on top. So it puts the battery really high up. So what I think I'm gonna do, Joey was kind of talking to me about it, I agree with him. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna weld this down on the frame. Um, that way I can remove the front clip, the battery can technically stay. Um, and I don't have to worry about disconnecting the battery and on top of that it keeps it much lower Granted it is out of the way of the wheel. I did check that but um, The front of the frame kind of does a little tilt guy down. So I'm gonna have to build a little bracket something kind of like This to weld onto this So when I set it down on the frame it doesn't, uh, you know, want to tilt down, and the battery is supported. Plus, I don't weld that great, so, you know, little support brackets help. Because I'm sure my weld is going to look like garbage. So, uh, alright, let's try to get this level. And we'll put a little, little spot on there, and, you know, we'll go from there. It's a new day. The thrash will finish the whole day on this thing. I'll show you what I got in. So we wired in everything we need to. Hopefully this thing will run. We're not really sure yet, 100%. I did get some fuel line in, ran fuel line up, made a little bracket to mount it to the frame. Nice and clean, going up that way. I'm gonna have to get a, nope, never mind. It's already still there, so we're good. Uh, I don't have any coolant lines yet, so I can't let it run for too long. But, and I also got the drive shaft in. So the drive shaft is now in, but the connection in the back is the wrong one. The correct one is on the rear end center section that I have being built. So now it's just kind of sitting here. But here's the interesting part. American Powertrain sent me eight quarts of automatic transmission fluid four of one type, four of another, and then one random thing of brake fluid. But I didn't buy brakes for them, so I don't, I don't know. But either way, I guess, fish posh. Figure it out. No, uh, I'm just gonna do like one and one and one and one, and then eventually when it's full, it's full, I guess? I don't, I don't know why they would give me four and four, but I guess I'm just gonna mix them. Because that seems logical. All right, let's try. Right, it's a new day down here. Got the canopy up under the truck. My other camera uh, took a little hit to the lens, and the lens isn't very happy now. So, I'm gonna have to use one of my small little GoPro knockoff things for the time being. So, uh, let me get the box out of the way. And this is what I got in last night. This is the AccuAir Ultimate air package for my air suspension comes with quite a bit uh starting off main one right is the tank itself it's a, a smart tank equivalent so it has it's not just a normal tank it has a bunch of other inputs to it which help regulate everything i have the uh pumps which are the 485 c's if i remember correct 
I have the entire suspension kit the ultimate package comes with the ride height controller right this is another part of that controller fuses relays this comes also with the uh, sensors to adjust for ride height for each corner so there should be four in there comes with wiring which is just some six gauge uh, other wiring concepts and then it comes with airline fittings so on so hopefully it should be everything I need uh, based off the reviews everybody was saying it comes with everything short of one fitting there's one fitting you have to buy it's like an adapter from like half inch or like three eighths down to a quarter inch uh, for an airline it doesn't come with it I can manage that so right now I wanted to open that up see how it looks and we'll go from there I'm going to continue working on a few things today. Number one, I'm going to extend the uh, linkage rod for the truck. I have to figure out where I'm going to mount all this stuff so I know how I need to route wiring to the rear. have to order that wiring so I can start actually hooking all this stuff up. And i got to clean out this bed. Needless to say, a lot of stuff going in the trash. I don't, I don't, I don't even know how it all gets back here, but it does. So, all right. Given the fact I'm working on a GoPro, uh, I guess I'll record what I can. I don't have any mounts for like camera tri tripods or anything like that. So, sorry if it's bumpy, but take you along for the bumpy ride. All right, not gonna lie. Alright, not gonna lie, I didn't really know where I'd put you guys for a while there. Yeah, but I found you. So this is what I've been working on. Alright, so... Let's uh, pile onto the... Creeper here. So, underneath... I've been able to mount both of the pumps. So I got my brackets welded on. These uh, are on rubber bushing mounts, so they should be able to have some shock absorption. And I got those mounted. So I put a brace on the back side to hold them. I also did my battery box. This battery box is what will hold the battery that runs the compressors back here. And that's about it. I got all those wired up, I'm good to go. So now, I'm working on miscellaneous other small stuff. This has got spark now. Wow, oh, the battery's toast. Oh, go get another one. trying to start it it was just cranking and cranking I have a feeling it has to deal something with ignition I think it has to deal with because it would always pop off as soon as I was letting go of the key so key would be in the start position nothing would happen and as soon as I let go and it starts to reset back that's when it would catch and I think my ignition switch might be bad or going could have a wire hooked up wrong on the back. I don't really know, but that's kind of where I'm at with that. We know it starts, we know it runs. It's a good start. What else do I need from the parts store? Other than like, just a new truck, that'd be nice. I don't know, we'll figure it out.
right, coolants in, battery hooked up, extra sh stuff out of the way. Gauges are in my bezel I made. I have water, temp, and oil pressure hooked up. As long as both gauges move, we're good. <laughs> I'm trying to get lugs soldered on the end of my wires. I'm working on wiring still. It's honestly probably been two days since I've last recorded. I'm still working on wiring. I'm slow at wiring and it's just how it is. So I'm going to show you what I do. You use a blowtorch. You, uh, you put what's called a slug. They look like a little pellet. So what you do is you take, yeah, all right, take a little pellet. You place it in the end, throw this in a vice grip or bench vice or whatever, use a torch, heat this up and you'll actually see this melt. Once it melts it turns into liquid solder and you just stick this in and give it about a minute and it will be dry or it will be cold or cool and it will solder everything for you. So you can kind of adjust always where you want the cable. So sometimes, you know, these cables, when you get bigger, you can't twist them very easy. So this is an easy way of set, setting these whichever angle you need them to be. So it's kind of a plug and play wire. I'll show you what I'm talking about. At any point, lightning wants to strike me. I'm all right with it at this point. Yeah. Working on electricity while laying in water yeah. with lightning striking all around you? What could go wrong? Oh, that was cold. I need, a, I need another one of these. Can you grab it for me? Sure. <laughs> what color was that? Yellow. Yellow. The middle range size. Not full, not big. Yeah. There we go. That's about right. What do you think? Thank you. Sir. I'd like to point out, Joey convinced me to come down here, and Joey is not here anymore. <laughs> Joey dipped out. <laughs> He's, come on, you're running out of time. Get down there. It's just a little water. He can't get his panties wet. <laughs> I mean his bandage, sorry. His bandage from getting bit by a rattlesnake when he tried to pet it. No joke. <laughs> Oh. No, no, Mike, he didn't try to pet it. He tried to grab it yes, exactly. five times. Five times. I don't know the fifth time he got bit. Yeah, the fifth time he got bit. Yep. Oh, whatever. Don't be a little girl. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, all right. I need uh, half inch wrenches and a lighter. Take, take two, take number two. All right, big money. Go.
let's see what else I can get done. So this is what I worked on over the last day or so. Just running some brake line. It's not flawless, not perfect, but it's ran for the moment. I'm gonna have to do some securing to make sure they don't vibrate and rattle everywhere, right? But I should be able to get that kind of secured a bit and better. This one runs across, runs underneath. Goes with this. Got my tabs welded in for my brake line up here. So that should work. Should work for what we need. All right, I'm gonna work on doing some drilling, doing some mounts, and getting those things secured, and then we'll start working on running the line to the rear. All right, so it's been like two days since I last recorded. A couple things, number one, I'm hoping my camera still works all right. It took a pretty bassy fall. Uh, I wasn't recording at the time, it was on my tripod. Wind kicked up and tripod went over. So my screen's all cracked up, can't really see very well out of it. Hopefully everything's recording fine, but this is what I've been working on and hopefully should give you an update. Front and rear brake lines are done. It doesn't look pretty, but it's, it's there. That's a good start. Uh, next up, pop the wheels off. Now I'm going to start working on the rear end. I got the new center section back from the, from the guy I had rebuilt it. So uh, let's get it out of the Jeep and uh, I guess over here and see how it looks. into an issue I don't know if I've really documented it yet by using our green bearing on the axle on this truck so the green bearing when we pushed it on moves the axle too far in and now the axles connect and hit each other inside uh, of the third member we thought okay well we installed recently had we recently had installed uh, sure grip so we thought well maybe it's the sure grip so we went through changed out put in the old open rear end and the axle still hit which means it's not the rear end and instead it's gonna have to deal with those green bearings it's the only variable that changed so obviously that's a problem We've, I'm rush ordering as fast as I can get it here uh, an order from Mosier Engineering for a different style set of green bearings. One has a clip and one does not. We're going to go with the does not size to see if that will change where the green bearing stops or I guess retains on the axle and then hopefully that will allow 
that to sit further out. If not, then I gotta cut an axle. But that leads a whole other big problem. <laughs> My little notch is done. It's our little RTV just to seal up any gaps that happen to be in it. Once that all hardens up, get a little paint job, we'll be good to go. Next thing I'm gonna be working on is cutting off the front bumper extension brackets here. So I'm gonna kinda of come up here, probably about here, just kinda of cut them off a little bit more flush. That way I can make some kind of a front dam because they stick out so far I won't be able to actually clear because it's going to come down so I'd have to build like this weird shape I'm not going to not nah, I'm not doing that I'm just going to so I'm just going to kind of build it so I can come down off of this or maybe nah it's too far down so probably up off of here I can just go straight down so I just got to chop off a little bit yes I can't run a stock bumper that's okay because this, I don't know if you noticed, it's not really a lot of stock left on it. Or original. So, let's, uh, I think I can use my, my, my uh, Milwaukee bandsaw for that. It's gonna be awkward, but uh, we'll try. All right, let's, let's go. Six hours later, no, I'm kidding. Well, maybe it is actually six hours later, but. All right, so the back end is good and done. So no more leaks. I have my uh, pull power there. That kicks on. I build pressure. And I don't have any leaks. So. How I see it, the compressor is done. I cannot run lines yet. I'm gonna be calling them tomorrow because I need to find out which valve or how we determine which valve puts out air to which corner. So that way I can make sure that, um, you know, the sensor is gonna pick up front left is low and I don't want it to push out air in this other corner thinking it's trying to fill that bag. So. I need to call AccuWare tomorrow, figure that out. That's tomorrow's problem. I went through, when I initially installed the brakes on this, I didn't turn the rotors, I didn't do anything because that would have been smart. Um, and I also had to put in the brake pads. So I pulled the wheels back off, put on the brake pads, so those will be better. And then I also uh, left the wheels off because tomorrow I need to be able to access where my fittings are, which are right here. Uh, because I have all my airline fittings coming for the bags. Axles come tomorrow. Uh, I two day ship those. So the bearings for the axles should be here tomorrow. So in theory, tomorrow, this truck could drive. It's a big could. I don't know, we'll see. Still gotta bleed the brakes once we get the axles on and all that stuff, so. A lot of work to get done, we'll see. All right, what we're gonna work on right now, Sean is heading home to refill the swamp cooler that we got, and we're gonna try to build the front end on this so we can get rid of this big, ugly gap that's there, and we can actually put it all back how it needs to be. 
And then we're gonna build a little air dam, a little functional air dam to force some air up into that. All right, well, let me take some measurements. You're gonna watch us build this, and I'm out here until it's done. And I'll tell you what, tomorrow morning's gonna come really quick. Way too quick. <laughs> Let's get to it. Minus five days, I think. He's five days out. Yep. It's like, I literally left the shop, I don't know, three hours ago, I think, four hours. I'm hurting. I'm hurting right now. All right, let's get to it. All right, so, we're in the process right now of running airlines, uh, which I'm still waiting on air fittings to come through from O'Reilly's. So what I'm working on right now is trying to clean up some of the uh, parts for the axle and the axle bearings. I just got the new axle bearings in, right? So there's two styles, I don't know if you guys know this or not. We may be just trying to fabricate to make this work. I don't know, we'll figure this out. I believe, I believe in us. So the old style, let me show you. So the first style that I went with, I bought from Dr. Diff. And it says for passenger cars and such. Obviously this is on a truck. So we're thinking maybe that's what our problem is. Once we put the axles in on both sides with the sure grip, it hits feel the axles hitting each other so you can't tighten them down because there's contact so some people were saying that things in the third member need to be removed I'm not pulling apart my third member because I didn't put it together and I don't know how it goes back together so what we're going to do is this the next thing we were told is cut the axles which we're trying not to do so we ordered different bearings there's two styles there's this kind which is going to come in your passenger car this is considered with a quote clip this is without a clip. So the difference is that there's a small retaining ring, like a snap ring almost, that goes on this outer ring. This one is an O-ring to seal from the axle. And then this outer flange, which is permanently mounted on this one, will actually go and ride just on the inside of that. So that's your outmost, or I'm sorry, it's your your inmost pulling, right? So what we're gonna do is you press these old bearings off, press on these new ones, and use these as a spacer to actually space out the axle slightly. And what that's gonna do is, well, it might interfere with some brakes, we'll see. We may have to shim the brakes, but at the end of the day, we'll probably make it work. So, let's get this cleaned up. All right, since the uh, press is inside, 
well, since the press is in a bay that's completely exposed to the sun right now, and it's stupid hot, I just got my airline fittings. Let's finish up the airline, and then we'll deal with the axle, and then the brakes, and the bleeding brake lines. We got rear axles in, disc brake conversion in. And hopefully all of the brake lines tightened up. I say hopefully because we're about to find out. Yeah, and very, very crude airlines plumbed up. Got a small leak somewhere, but I don't really care at this point. It'll hold air and it will drive if we need it to. So, that's my start. Let's see if we can get some brake power here. And once we get brakes, we can put it back down on the ground, test the air ride, and then technically put rear end, or put uh, yeah, some gear oil in the diff, and we can technically drive it. All right, let's get to it. All right, brakes are blood as best we can for the moment. We're just trying to get a little, eh, make sure it moves just 10 feet that way, you know? So, bags are inflating. Let's get the bags fully inflated so I can get the jack out and go from there. Alright, so what do we get done? The truck's running. But just because it's running doesn't mean we have everything done we need to, right? So we need certain things done to be race qualified. So trans tunnel, not done. Green bearings, install. Disc brakes are installed. Bleed brakes. Uh, uh, they're softer than fresh bread, but technically they stop. How about we just do this? We got brakes. I don't know if they're blood. We got front arrow done. Parking brake install, no. Compressor lines, yeah. No exhaust, no wiper blades. Doors still sag. Speedometer wire, no idea how we're gonna do that. And I gotta replace the soft fuel line for fuel, just so you guys are aware. You can't have long amounts of soft line. So all of this being fuel line, all has to be changed to the hard line, so I gotta knock that out too. So other than that, other than that, pretty close. Let's get a good couple close-ups on the truck and probably call it a night.
All right, so that's it for the D100 slash 200 project, right? Because it's kind of this love child of both. So as of right now, we finally got the axles in. We ended up getting the air management system running. We don't have sensors in it yet. That will probably happen, I'm hoping, in the next, I don't know, couple weeks. I'm not needing it, obviously. It runs without it, but it's got to be part of it. I uh, still have a lot of little things to do uh, on that little checklist, as you guys saw. And honestly, uh, there's a lot to get done. Uh, definitely a massive help from George from Distraction Garage. Sean down in Bay 7 helped me weld up the grill and helped me put a lot of wrench time in this. Joey at James Automotive has also helped immensely trying to get this project going. They understand my deadline and they are getting yelled at by their wives so I can go play. Massive shout out. So as always, as of right now, it's looking good. Duct tape drags is going to happen unless something catastrophic comes through and I'm just gonna knock right on this wood right here. That's the best I got. Oh, better yet. <laughs> right on that steering wheel. All right, other than that, if you guys like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. As always, comment below if you want to show, if you want me to try to show more of something on here. And always, keep building. <laughs>